everyone. As Albert Einstein once said, education is not the learning of the facts, but the training of the mind to think. That brings me to the most important event of today. It is with great delight we invite you all to watch the effort, hard work and creativity of the grade 8A students as they present their virtual exhibition highlighting the theme Global Minds for a Better World. Our class will now present visions, ideas and thoughts on various global issues. So sit back, relax and enjoy the show. Thank you. Hello everyone. My name is Yuvraj and today I would like to discuss about my topic on how we can reduce the risk of natural disasters in Indonesia. My goal is to spread awareness of these disasters and to inform of ways we could prevent them through technology and humanity. Indonesia, our country, is an archipelago country situated in Southeast Asia, the fourth largest country in the world. It is blessed with nature, medical facilities, employment and a growing economy. But the one issue that Indonesia has to face has to be its geography. You see, Indonesia sits on two of the world's tectonic plates the Indo-Australian plate and the Sudan plate. The issue is because of this, Indonesia keeps facing the growing threat of natural disasters every year. For example, one of these plates when sliding into each other can cause an earthquake. Take up the 2004 Indian Ocean earthquake registered at a magnitude of 9.1 in which 230,000 people were killed. But now, thanks to future technology that has progressed, tragedies such as this can be prevented and avoided in the future. We can do this by keeping buildings from shaking from side to side as much as possible with the help of two in mass damners. Large pendulums placed inside tall buildings which sway and respond to what movements a building makes. But for shorter buildings, we could isolate the base of the buildings using rubber and lead that act like shock absorbers. When one gets forced underneath another, it creates a volcano. Eruptions that have to have an evacuation plan ready. Involves having an action plan along with emergency shelters and food supplies that should include masks, instructions on what is needed to be done, and most important, to be staying calm during the situation. On 2008 September, an earthquake about Shok Sulawesi Island in Indonesia and triggered a tsunami that pummeled Palu, the province capital. An inspiration from Japan. This could be addressed by building a seawall around the region's coastline. The wall will be built with reinforced concrete pillars, which will be created a new barrier, supported by foundations 25 meters deep and a new 14 meter high seawall, which will form the front wall. In all, we can't stop natural disasters, but we can reduce the negative effects of them so that it has lesser effect on our country. And who knows, maybe in the future, technology could prevent or minimize them altogether. This is my brochure and my process journal, which contains my research and which help present my info. And of course, this is my bibliography. Without these sites and videos, this would have not been possible. Thank you. you all to imagine yourself. You're nine years old. You don't go to school. You don't play. You're forced to work in horrifying conditions for 12 to 16 hours a day with barely any food in your stomach. Welcome to the world of child labor. My name is Rajeshwari and I'm here to deliver a speech on the topic child labor with the help of a 3D poster. Child labor 
has been the most important concern in the whole world because it affects the children, our future generation, both mentally and physically. Despite the fact that every child is considered as the gift of God and must be nurtured with care and affection, children are forced to work in industries, factories, restaurants, hotels, and so much more due to the social economic problems such as overpopulation, poverty, and most importantly, lack of free education. The most shocking news that I've ever heard is that India is one of the foremost countries in Asia that has employed 33 million children in various forms of child labor. And the statistics portrayed here depicts the states where over half of the country's total child labor population works. So, my next question, is child labor actually illegal? The answer is a big yes. In some cases, the children are sold off by their own parents through their desperate needs. Can you imagine that? These kids, they go through so much trauma, like forced labor, armed conflict, prostitution, and drug trafficking that it scars them for life. Just imagine you were one of them, facing all the evils that life could ever bring. Would you still support child labor after all this? I hope not. So, to free our children from such evils, we need to make every effort to shape the future of the children better. Individual aid is needed to make a change in the society. So, how I started to help is firstly by making this video presentation and creating this infographical brochure which contains information on the consequences and solutions of child labor. This brochure will act as a guide and empathize the readers, resulting in a change of mindset. My goal is to preserve that every child deserves education. They should be given free education because it gives them the ability to perceive the world as they see it, resulting in the country to develop. As you can see, by doing this project, I learned that small, tiny hands can grip a pen well, not a tool. And to accomplish this task, I started with the process journal which included the most important inquiry question. Why child labor? Why not child education? Because child labor is a crime, crime, crime. And we don't like crime. So, if not now, then when? If not you, then who? Only you have the power to make a change in the society.
society. So, eradicate child labor to aspire for a better nation and better future. Thank you for your kind attention. Hello everyone, my name is Pratham Shankar and today I am going to talk about biodiversity. My inquiry questions are how biodiversity help us and what are the three types of biodiversity. My interdisciplinary unit is science. What is biodiversity? Biodiversity is the variety of life on earth and its biological diversity is commonly referred as biodiversity. Biodiversity is the most complex and also very vital. Importance of biodiversity. It is important as biodiversity boosts ecosystem productively, where each species, no matter how small, all have an important role to play. If any one small animal species are removed, then it will affect on other animal species also. For example, green plants provide oxygen and water cycle provides clean water. Types of biodiversity. Biodiversity includes three main types. Diversity within species, known as genetic diversity, between species, known as species diversity, and between ecosystem, known as ecosystem diversity. Species diversity. Species diversity is the variety of species within a habitat or a region. Species diversity is defined as the number of species and abundance of each species that live in a particular location. Number of species that live in a certain location is called species richness. Example, presence of four or five different species of tree in a woodland forest. Ecological diversity. Ecological diversity is the intricate network or of different species present in local ecosystem and the dynamic interplay between them. Genetic diversity. It is basically the variety of species expressed at the genetic level by each individual in a species. Genetic diversity refers to the diversity within the species. For example, the thousands of breeds of different dogs are the numerous variety of roses. And this is my model. My name is Joan and my topic is energy transition. My goal is to inform others about energy transition through BPT and a brochure. Energy transition. What is energy transition? Well, the term energy transition refers to transitioning from one source of energy to another, or in this case, non-renewable source of energy to renewable source of energy. The non-renewable source of energy include oil, natural gas, and coal, to renewable energy sources like wind and solar. Human welfare. The energy transition will contribute positive impacts and benefits on the wider human welfare to the improve, improvement of human health and access to energy. It will decrease air pollution, which is estimated to be the fourth leading risk factor for early death globally. Other benefits that aren't just environmental. Jobs in the energy transition. The transition towards clean energy requires equipment, technology, and etc. Thereby, it will offer more jobs more employment opportunities or jobs across the globe. Accelerating the energy transition, integrating renewables and energy effic effic efficiency for flexibility and resilience, unleashing the potential by working together to accelerate the energy transition. World's clean energy transition too slow.
The global transition to clean energy is still far too slow to meet climate pledges and risk fueling even greater price volatility. Why isn't energy transition happening globally? Cost, transmission, and politics. This is my MYP booklet. And this is my brochure. This is my bibliography. Thank you. Hello everyone, my name is Karen Machanda and I'm from grade 8A and this is my exhibition project on mental health of teens. I have two goals for this project. Number one is to prove that mental health is as important as physical health. And my second goal is to prove that teen depression is real and indeed serious. So, shall we begin? Okay. Have you ever wondered what's going on in your teen's mind? Have you ever seen a pattern in their behavior and the way that they are behaving? Many. Oh, not many, 90% of parents think and blame it on the age factor and on the hormones. But is it always hormones? Can it be something else? Ha! There we go. Of course it can be something else. Why not? So, to understand teens, we need to understand their complex mind. Teens are indeed very difficult creatures to understand. And despite the fact that their brain is still developing, as you can see a picture right there under construction, that's true. In this age, your, you parents are a villain in your teen's eyes. Even though you're right, they will think that they're wrong and they will blame you for everything. And in this case, you have to talk to them like a friend because talking like a friend will strengthen the bond and the trust between you and your teen. And talking sweetly, Calmly is the only way your teen will listen to you. Otherwise, if you shout at them or yell at the top of your lungs at them, they will hate you even more. And I'm not saying to drop your adult responsibilities, of course not. Just be a friend to them. Don't be a parent. Oh God, please don't. Don't lecture them instead. Because in this age, teens will, teens, have you noticed that teens are always with their friends. They always listen to their friends. So that you have to also do the same thing. You also have to be a friend to them in order to get their intention. And never ever force out teens to express their feelings to you. Give it time. They will, they will as they feel comfortable around you, you, they will also feel like they should open up to you and they will, trust me. Give them space. Oh, don't yell at them like, why are you always glued to your phone 24 into seven? Oh my God, why, why are you like this? Why don't you want to spend time with us? No, this behavior will just, you know, pull apart your team from you. It will get your team away from you, like, whoa. And for this, what you have to do is give your team space, as much space as they need. Teens need to find their true self. And in order to do this, they need to be alone, alone away from the family. Don't force them to spend time with you. Give it time, they'll come back. They'll come to you yourself. This point is the most important. Understand that they aren't kids anymore. Teens are expected to act like adults but are treated like kids. You know why it's difficult to understand teens? Because they come in the middle. They aren't adults, neither are they kids. Don't treat them like a child and understand that they're old enough to understand things. This is just a story based on a girl, Amanda Todd. She committed suicide a few years ago because of the depression and stress. You can read her story on YouTube. It's based on a true story and it's serious. You can read these cards over here. You know these text messages over here? This is a side teens never tell your parents. Insecurity, anxiety, depression. This literally pressurizes your child. The voice inside your child's head. You're fat, no one likes you. Worthless. These words they build so much that they end up swallowing your child. Why is this a global issue? Because it's happening everywhere around the world. Many teens are suffering because of this. I know this is a scientific topic, but it's always ignored. And mental health is as important as physical health. And always remember that your teens are growing and their mind is changed. The first step is always hard, but it's never impossible. And that's the end. Thank you. And remember that this PPD's purpose was not to offend or insult any parents. It's clear intention was to 
describe the global issue, and also guide parents. Always remember that teenage years are very special. So love your teens and exceptionally and trust them. They will make you proud one day. Thank you very much. And this is my brochure, because you can see. Wait a second. Yeah. This is my brochure. So I've just mentioned the main points in this one, and this is my cover. Thank you. Bye. My name is Ajayan and today I'll be talking about my exhibition topic, Clean Energy. My goal is to help spread awareness to which different sources of energy we can use to help generate electricity with zero greenhouse gas emissions from fossil fuels, reduces pollutions and also reduces our dependency on non-renewable sources of energy. Clean energy is a renewable source of energy. It produces zero greenhouse gases and also does not pollute the environment. Renewable sources of energy is that can be replenished and never depleted. But non-renewable sources of energy is that will not be replenished but depleted in our lifetime. Solar energy is an example of renewable sources of energy. It harnesses the light and heat from the sun and generates electricity. Wind energy uses wind to spin turbines to generate electricity. Hydroelectricity uses the flow of water to generate electricity. Geothermal energy uses the heat from the Earth's surface to spin turbines to generate electricity. Nuclear energy. Nuclear energy comes from splitting atoms in a reactor to heat water into steam, then turn a turbine to generate electricity. This is the brochure I created. It tells in brief about my topic, about what clean energy is, and also gives you examples about renewable sources of energy. This will really help me to spread awareness. This was my process general where I created all my organizers to help me identify my topic, my subject, my global context, my inquiry questions, and also sources I can use for research. I also evaluated all my sources in an OB wheel chart here and also wrote my final reflections. Thank you. Hello everyone, my name is Jia Omale from grade 8A and I'm gonna talk about child poverty. Child poverty, the condition of children from poor families and often orphans growing up with scarce or non-existent resources. The main causes of child poverty. The main cause for child poverty is climate change. Climate change has the power to push more than 100 million people into poverty over the next decade. Many of the world's poorest populations rely on farming or hunting and gathering to eat and earn a living. Other causes of child poverty, no access to clean water and nutritious food, poor and unemployed parents, lack of education, little or no access to clean water, sanitation and hygiene, poor health care system. Global child poverty rates in perspective. Nowadays, people don't care much about child poverty and mostly think only about themselves. They think that they haven't done anything to cause child poverty, so it's not their problem. But we are the main reason that children are going through poverty. How do we cause child poverty? We cause child poverty by littering and throwing trash everywhere, which can make the climate worse and affect children more by not getting clean water. We can cause poverty by wasting food and throwing all of them. How do we end child poverty? Increase household income better primary and secondary education, create jobs for unemployed ages from 16 to 64 in families with children. This is the bibliography. This, I have made a brochure over here about child poverty. I wrote the main points, which is what is child poverty, causes of child poverty, and how we can end child poverty. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Rivan Sana and I am from grade 8. Today I will speak on my exhibition topic, Biodiversity, All Life is Important. What is biodiversity? The term biodiversity refers to the variety of life on Earth at all its levels, from genes to ecosystems, and it can encompass the evolutionary, ecological, and cultural processes that sustain life. What has happened to biodiversity? Biodiversity or the variety of all living things on our planet has been declining at an alarming rate in recent years, mainly due to human activities such as land use changes, pollution and climate change. Causes of the loss of biodiversity 
human causes. If no changes are made in the ways humans use resources on Earth, there will continue to be a degradation of biodiversity until human lives can no longer be sustained. Humans affect biodiversity by their population numbers, use of land, and their lifestyles, causing damage to habitats for species. It is important for humans to realize how their actions affect biodiversity and the importance of maintaining what biodiversity is left on Earth. Non-human causes. The five main threats to biodiversity are habitat loss, pollution, overexploitation, invasive species, and climate change. Increased mobility in trade has resulted in the introduction of invasive species, while the other threats are direct results of human population growth and resource use. Biodiversity around the world. This is a map showing the places with the most biodiversity around the world. Africa and South America have a lot of biodiversity, but Asia has the most, especially in the Southeast Asian region, like which include countries such as Japan, Philippines, Indonesia, Thailand, etc. Five animals that have gone extinct in the past 22 years. My process journal. This is my process journal, which includes how I did everything. It includes how I made my global context and my reflection for the entire exhibition. This is my bibliography, which includes the links to all the websites that I have used for my exhibition. Thank you by Evan Sin. Hi everyone, I'm Moshi from grade 8A and today I'm gonna to be talking about poverty. What is poverty? Poverty is a state or condition in which a person or community lacks the financial resources and essentials for a minimum standard of living. Poverty means that the income level from employment is so low that basic human needs can't be met. There are many different types of poverty and some of them include absolute poverty, relative poverty, situational poverty, and generational or chronic poverty. Causes of poverty, inadequate food and limited access to clean water, limited or poor access to health care, poor education, climate change, overpopulation, and even unequal distribution of resources. But however, have you ever wondered what are the problems that people in poverty face every day? Well, here are some of them. Poverty entails more than the lack of income and productive resources to ensure sustainable livelihoods. Its examples include hunger and malnutrition, limited access to education and other basic services, social discrimination and exclusion, as well as the lack of participation in decision making. But how can we reduce poverty? We can create jobs, raise the minimum wage, invest in affordable, high quality childcare and early education, provide clean water, ensure basic healthcare, improve childhood nutrition, and support environmental programs. Why should we donate to the people in poverty? We can help the people in poverty by donating to organizations and charities, because when we donate money for programs that help the working poor make their way out of poverty, we're helping to create a population within our community that is much stronger. One example of a trusted organization that helps the people in poverty is called the Oxfam International Organization. We can donate resources in this program and they will be given to the people living in poverty. As you can see, I have made a brochure on the Oxfam International Organization. Oxfam is a global movement of people working together to end the injustice of poverty. How can we make a difference? Our charitable gift can help these resilient communities continue to forge a pathway out of poverty and level the socioeconomic playing field to help more people access the chance to create sustainable livelihoods. How to donate? It's simple and easy. Just go to the Oxfam International website and you can follow their instructions to donate. My goal for this presentation is to educate everyone on the topic of poverty so that more people are familiar with it and so that we know how to make a difference in their community. I really hope that this presentation helped us in understanding more on poverty and how we can make a big difference in helping them. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Pranav Arun Mirjandani, and my exhibition topic is Renewable Energy and Conservation. My goal for this presentation is to inform people about renewable energy 
and also to persuade people to use renewable resources and also conserve energy. What is renewable energy? Renewable energy in simple terms is energy that comes from natural resources or processes that are constantly replenished. Solar energy is radiant light and heat from the sun that is harnessed using technologies to generate electricity. Wind energy is the process by which wind is used to generate electricity. The turbines use the blades to collect the wind's kinetic energy, which then connects to a generator, which then provides the electricity. Biomass is a plant-based energy source, which then gets burned to generate electricity, as chemical energy present in biomass is released as heat, which we then can collect. Hydropower, also known as water power, is the use of fast running water which flows through a pipe which then pushes against the blade in the turbine to spin a generator that produces electricity. What is energy conservation? Energy conservation is the effort made to reduce the consumption of energy by reducing the amount of energy we use on a daily basis. Here are some ways we can conserve energy at home. We can turn off the lights when we are about to leave a room. We can switch to LED lights. We can switch to a more efficient appliance. We can unplug our new electronic devices. And finally, we can lessen our water usage. These are the sources I use to collect my information. Thank you for watching my presentation. Have a nice day ahead. In another war, say to all, allow me to introduce myself. I'm Prisaja, a student of grade 8A. As we all know, war has many definitions, as people interpret it differently. Some say war is a state of usually open and declared armed hostile conflict between states or nations, or it is an act to force to compel our enemy to do our will. Till today, War has no exact definition as it is a broad topic to talk about. What are the causes of war? War is usually caused because of these eight major reasons. Economic gain, territorial gain, religion, nationalism, revenge, civil war, revolutionary war, defensive war. Wherever it is that, war is never welcome with open arms as it has too much harmful impacts, such as obvious casualties, hatred and propaganda. Liberty takes a backseat to patriotism, harmful impact on country and society, environmental damage. It is not that war only has disadvantages, it has benefits also, like economic growth, technological advancement, increasing the power of government. However, we can say that Disadvantages of war overwhelm the benefits of it. War is good for a few, but bad for the most. I myself support no war. Too many lives are lost during it, and it is the greatest casualty in war. My goal is to spread awareness to people that war is now pointless. There's nothing we are gaining that will help the people. Say no to war. In the olden days, war would be fought for real honorable reasons but in this era we have none so please say no to war say to all here is the brochure and journal that will give more insight on the topic thank you for your time and attention Water is a very valuable resource for us, and it is the only liquid we can use to hydrate our body. Without this, we will get terminal dehydration, which is very bad for our bodies. Domestic households produce an average of 200 to 300 liters of water waste per person every day. 99% of this waste water is water. The other 1% is the contaminating waste. Most countries have now started using water saving techniques such as installing water filters. 
the waste water produced by households is taken through pipes then cleaned filtered and biologically cleaned then this water is turned back into drinking water or toilet usable water on the left we have the area where they clean the water and right is the process they use to clean the water even though this is a process the country is doing we should not rely on this we should try our best to save as much water as possible because you will never know when it will be needed in the future 771 million people globally don't have access to safe water drinking dirty water makes people ill that's just part of the picture a lack of safe water and and sanitation holds back development and makes it harder for communities to escape the poverty trap march 22nd is world water day if recent reports are anything to go by the world seems to be headed towards a serious water crisis here are some easy ways to conserve water and do your best bit to save water at home thanks for viewing my presentation and i hope you have a wonderful day thank you hello my name is gwendolyn i am from 8a my exhibition topic is why is biodiversity so important and my global context is globalization and sustainability a biologically diverse planet is key for a sustainable future using modern agriculture we can save space for animals and insects and safeguard our biodiverse soils but how will plant science get us there advances in crop protection and plant biotechnology means farmers can grow more on the land they already have and more biodiverse soil doesn't have to be cleared to grow food biotech crops paired with herbicides enable no till where soil is left undisturbed this leaves carbon in the soil where it belongs and lets soil's natural biodiversity flourish with plant science we can feed the world and provide a healthy biodiverse planet Biodiversity loss is a severe concern, but why is biodiversity important? And why should this group be conserved in particular? Biodiversity is life with all those varied plants and creatures that are in perfect harmony with one another. Think of it as a tower. When you remove one block after another, the tower becomes increasingly unstable and eventually tips over when an ecosystem collapse. Water filtration by the soil, CO2 storage by your trees, Temperature regulation by vegetation and the natural habitat for animals are all gone. A system that has crumbled can have serious consequences. More severe weather conditions such as erosion and floods are included. Furthermore, regaining all biodiversity is quite challenging. It takes a long time and a lot of expertise to rebuild the tower, which is why biodiversity is so important. It's also why we must protect it. This is my process journal that has helped me keep my work organized. This is my brochure. Thank you everyone for listening. Good morning, everyone. My name is Shan, and today I will be talking about air and water pollution. What is air and water pollution? Air pollution is a contamination of the indoor or outdoor environment by any chemical, physical, or biological agent that modifies the natural characteristics of the atmosphere. Water pollution is a contamination of water sources by substances which make the water unusable for drinking, cooking, cleaning, swimming, and other activities. What causes water pollution? Spills or leaks from oil and chemical containers, chemical waste dumping, marine dumping, accidental oil leakage, and etc. What causes air pollution? The burning of fossil fuels? wildfires, transportations such as cars, buses, planes, trucks, and trains, open burning of garbage waste, and etc. How does water pollution affect human health? Contaminated water can harbor bacteria such as those responsible for diarrhea, cholera, typhoid, and polio. How does air pollution affect human health? 
Long-term health effects from air pollution include heart disease, lung cancer, and respiratory diseases such as emphysema. How can we stop air pollution? Using public, using public transportation, turn off the lights when not in use, recycle and reuse, and say no to plastic bags. How can we stop water pollution? Use less plastic, reuse items, do not dispose of oils in the sink, clean chemicals, do not throw away medicines. This is the brochure I made, and this is the inside of the brochure. And this is the bibliography I use. Thank you. Hi, my name is Kyle, and my exhibition topic is about global warming. What is global warming? Global warming is the process of rising Earth's temperature, which have been caused since the pre-industrial period due to human activities, mainly burning fossil fuels, deforestation, and climbing tree illegally, which increases the greenhouse gas levels in Earth's temperature. Impact of global warming Global warming mainly causes increasing of Earth's temperature. In addition, Earth's temperature is linked to climate change. If the climate changes, there will be less water, but more drought places as well as insect outbreaks. Also, due to the climate change, there will be less water supplies, reduce of agricultural yields, increased wildfires, flooding and erosion in coastal areas too. The causes of global warming. Global warming have started due to the human activity, such as burning fossil fuels, cutting down forests and farming livestock, overfishing, oil drilling, and lots more. Also, the greenhouse gases known as carbon dioxide, methane, nitrous oxide, etc. is one of, also one of the causes of global warming. Some ways to prevent global warming. We also have some ways to prevent global warming. The most important part is to reduce, reuse, recycle. And also try not to take cars to near distances, try to walk, ride a bicycle, or ride the bus and carpool with people. As well as try to reduce using heat and air conditioner, change your light bulb, and plant a tree. This is my brochure. And this is my bibliography. Thank you. Hello, I'm Farrell and this is my video. It's based on global warming. What is global warming? Global warming is a long-term heating of Earth's climate system observed since the pre-industrial period between 1850 until 1900s. Due to human activities, uh, the fossil fuel is burning which increases heat trapping greenhouse le gas levels in the Earth's atmosphere. The cause of this is some greenhouse gases reflectivity or absorption of the sun's energy variation in solar activity changes in earth's reflectivity and volcanic activity how can we stop this we can change the light replacing one regular light bulb with a compact fluorescent light bulb will save 150 pounds of carbon dioxide a year we should drive less since it's creating more pollution for the city. We should recycle more. We should check our tires. Use less hot water. Avoid products with a lot of packaging. Adjust your thermostat. Plant a tree. Walk and cycle a bike. Ride the bus to work. Or you can also use a carpool. What is global warming effects? More frequent and severe weather, higher temperatures are worsening many types of disasters, including storms, heat waves, floods. Hi, my name is Tiffany, and today I'm going to be talking about drugs. After a long time pandemic situation, I found out more people easily get discouraged while staying home for so long, which caused the depression. Why did I choose this topic? I chose this topic to spread the awareness of how drugs can destroy life from a very young age. Young people's brains are growing and developing until they are in their mid-twenties. It can also affect their decision-making. 
First, let's talk about what drugs are. A drug is any chemical substances that affects an organism's psychology. Food and other items that help with nutrition assistance are usually distinguished with drugs. They can change one's mental or physical state. They can have an impact on how your brain functions, how you feel and act, as well as your sight and senses. Now, let's debunk the three types of drugs. The first one, pharmaceutical drugs. In pharmacology, a drug is a chemical substance having a known structure that has a biological effect when given to a living thing. It is often known as medication or medicine, which is a chemical substance used to treat, cure, prevent, or diagnose disease, as well as improve health. This drug is legal only by the orders of a nurse, etc. Second, psychoactive drugs. These are chemical substances that modify perception, mood, or awareness by influencing the function of the central nervous system. These drugs are used for temporarily curing mental illness. The final one, illegal drugs. These drugs are prohibited by law. Different illegal drugs have different effects on different people, and these effects can be influenced by a range of factors. This makes them un unpredictable and dangerous for all ages. Why are drugs so addictive and commonly used. When something amazing happens, the brain releases dopamine. As more drugs are consumed, the brain becomes increasingly dependent on those high, higher levels of dopamine. As a result, the initial influence felt by the person is reduced. The brain becomes immune to the previous effect and therefore needs more to reach the same result, which leads into seeking more. Drugs are consumed commonly because it reduces stress. Healthy lifestyle and natural ap approach could reduce the drug usage, preserving natural resources. Thank you. Hello, my name is Billy, and I'm from grade 8A. My mentor is Ms. Wina, and my expression topic is poverty. Now, I'm going to ask you, do you know what poverty is? Poverty is a state when people get really poor and cannot afford to buy food and eat. So in short, poverty means being very poor. What is experiencing poverty like? People who suffer from poverty not only need food, but they also need shelter to protect, protect themselves from rain, snow, or even heat from the sun. People experiencing poverty is really sad. These are pictures of people experiencing poverty. Some people are able to afford food, but are not hygienic. We should donate them because every dollar we put on them gives them a chance to live for another day. We should give them food instead of money if we don't trust them. Government should help homeless people with public facilities. It's better than leaving them to die from hunger. Thank you. How racial stereotypes affect life. What are racial stereotypes? Racial stereotypes is when a person's personality and habits are assumed just because of race. A person could be labeled as something just because another person thinks that all people of that race is the same. However, this is obviously wrong. Just because you are a certain race does not make you less than or better than anyone else. This may seem simple enough, but racial stereotypes sadly still plays a big part in life. A lot of people don't think that making stereotypes are a big deal. A lot of people say it as a joke sometimes, which seems harmless at first, but can turn serious if race is how a person judges someone. Our world is very connected. Many people of different races live in the same place. Singapore is a good example of a country that has many different ethnicities, Malaysia as well. Minority groups in Singapore continue to indicate that they feel discriminated against when applying for jobs or seeking promotions in certain companies. The discrimination mentioned are presumably more prominent for white collar jobs, but there is an ongoing debate on whether companies choose to hire a local Chinese over a non-local. As of 2020, Black families have a median household income of just over $41,000, whereas white families have a median household income of more than $70,000. Historically, there have been racial dis discrepancies not only in earning from labor, but also the benefits received involuntar involuntarily from employers. The Little Rock Nine 
The Little Rock Nine were a group of nine African-American students enrolled in Little Rock Central High School in 1957. The students were initially prevented from entering the racial segregated school by Orville Faubus, the governor of Arkansas, on September 4th, 1957, the Arkansas National Guard was called in. They were meant to prevent the black students from entering. However, President Eisenhower issued issued protective order to support the integration on September 23rd of that year, after which they protected the African-American students. The Little Rock Nine is a great example of what we should do. We should make good impacts in the world. They risk their lives to go to school. They persevere to make a difference in our world. If people like the Little Rock Nine stood still and did nothing, we would have never be able to move forward. Sometimes we should learn from the past. We still have a long way to go, but we should progress so we can get closer to living in our ideal world. Hi, my name is Septian and I'm from grade 8A and today my exhibition project is about Make Love Not War. World War I broke out in 1914 till 1918. Within those three years, there were 20 million people who died. And World War II broke out in 1939 till 1945. Between those three years, there were 18 million people who died. Fears and anxiety were everywhere, we couldn't sleep peacefully. Hope started to fade away and there was no promising future for anyone. Freedom fighters who fight for their country. So Karno stood up and started a committee rebel against any instruction given to them at the time. Eventually, he became the first president of Indonesia. Muhammad Hatta, also known as the first vice president of Indonesia, he also fought along with Sukarno until the end of the war and has helped Indonesia for a long time. And now I'm gonna talk about the bad effects after war. There are a lot of bad effects after the war, such as political institution, disability, injury, illness, malnutrition, and death. Those are some of the most consequences about war. And there are also mental problems such as post-traumatic stress disorder, also known as PTSD, depression, and anxiety. And then my conclusion is that war is a really bad option to solve a problem because it has a lot of bad effects and a lot of people are involved in it and they could also die during war. I think that it is better to talk about the problems rather than having a war, which has a lot of impact of, for the world that we live in. And that's my presentation, and thank you for listening. Hi, I am Chow. My topic is greenhouse gas emission. I chose this topic to tell people why greenhouse gas is important and what greenhouse gas emission is. Greenhouse gas emissions are any gas that absorbs infrared radiation released from the Earth's surface and re radiated back to the Earth's surface. This is the greenhouse gas effect. Why is greenhouse gas emission important? They trap part of the Earth's radiated energy retaining heat in the atmosphere. The greenhouse gases help act as a filter, bouncing much of the unneeded and harmful energy back to it into space. They assist to maintain the temperature. This will result in hotter summers and more natural calamities in recent years. Hurricanes have grown more frequent. They cause climate change by trapping heat, and they also contribute to respiratory disease from smog and air pollution. Ways to reduce greenhouse gas emission. Reducing of energy consumption, reduction of emissions of nitrous oxide and methane from agriculture, generate electricity without emissions. Over the last 150 years has been caused by human activities. Fossil fuels for power, heat, and transportation is a major source of greenhouse gas emission from human activities. This graph shows that carbon emissions from fossil fuels have increased from 1900 to 2010. Greenhouse gas emissions have a wide range of environmental and health consequences. 
Greenhouse gas emissions can be decreased by generating electricity on site using renewable and other environmental friendly energy sources. This is a bibliography, and this is my personal journal. This is my brochure. Thank you. Hi, my name is Charlin. My exhibition topic is about effects of climate change. I chose this topic to spread awareness on climate change. Climate change are the long-term shifts in temperatures and the constant changes of weather patterns. Climate change occurs due to various reasons and factors. It has been a global concern as it can have a huge impact to the ecosystem and harm Earth in various ways. Climate change has been happening since a long time ago. Climate change naturally happens due to volcanic eruptions, solar radiation, and orbital variations. These factors raise the temperature which causes imbalance to nature. The activities humans do such as deforestation, too much of fossil fuel consumption, pollution, and many other factors that can cause changes in weather. Extreme weather events are already a global concern, threatening lives. Climatic changes have multiple negative impacts on Earth. Ocean levels are rising, glaciers are melting, the amount of carbon dioxide in the air are rising, and many more factors that may lead to the increase of higher chances of death. Floods one of the most common problems we face, increasing sea levels, flooding cities or villages, and cause damage to a large number of housings. Climate change may affect their health as well. This could be due to diseases or due to constant changes in the climate. Agriculture and farming are already enduring through such problems due to climate change. Climate change prevents crops from growing. A lot of animals may face dangers and extinction due to climate change as it may create changes to their habitat. Every living being, including humans, animals, and others, will have to be able to adapt to our new environment during climatic changes. Over the years, people have been demanding the perfect solution to stop global warming and climate change. We can start by simply investing renewable energy, use eco-friendlier resources that are renewable, improve farming and agriculture, stop deforestation, reduce greenhouse gas emissions, and reduce the amount of waste. Here is my process journal, my brochure, and the bibliography. Thank you. My name is Sashin and I'm from AD. Today, I'm going to present an ex exhibition PPT on the topic of child trafficking. Child trafficking. Children is not for sale. Trafficking is where children and young people get tricked, forced, or persuaded to leave their homes and are moved, or transported, and then exploited, forced to work, or used for sex, or sold. For the purpose of exploitation, it can be sexual exploitation, slavery, and forced. Trafficking is any part of the process from finding and recruiting children to transporting and receiving them. Men, women, and children all over the world are victims of trafficking, but children are particularly at risk. Impacts of child trafficking Physical injuries Experiencing of physical abuse or addiction Sexually transmitted infections and multiple pregnancies or early periods for girls and prolonged periods of sexual violence Real life experience of victims who survived the trafficking 1. Natalia was 13 years old when she was sent with family friends from Ghana to the U.S. for an e education and to learn English. Soon after she arrived, the physical and sexual abuse began. She was forced to do domestic work for 18 hours a day without being paid. Natalia was not allowed to go to school, use the phone, or even go outside. The problem can sound overwhelming, especially when you start to look at the multiple underlying causes such as the demand for cheap labor, violent conflicts, and poverty. And those causes can also be quite complex. For instance, poverty not only drives children and families to seek opportunities elsewhere, but in some instances, parents will even sell their children not just for money, but in the misguided hope that their children may escape poverty and have a better life. Why did I choose this topic? I chose this topic about child trafficking because it is a serious topic which should be talked about. It should create awareness to people, children. Tell us about how difficult children experience this situation by risking their life in a very young age. Awareness rising is very powerful because it educates people about topics and encourages them to participate in bringing a change in our community and we should join hands. This is my brochure. 
my exhibition journal and this is my bibliography thank you good morning i am ha and ipe today my exhibition topic is child labor what is child labor child labor is a worldwide issue it has existed throughout the history Many poor people aged between 5 to 14 were forced to work during the 19th and 10th century. The children mainly worked in agriculture, factories, farming, mining, household activities, and so many more. This work gave children mental, social, and physical harm. The worst thing is that child labor is still happening around the world in the present. The causes of child labor is overexploitation of population, Increase of poverty, lack of schooling and daily care, limited choices for women, increase of employment, and decrease of resources. Child labor in Indonesia. Indonesia has committed to eliminate all forms of child labor by 2022 to fulfill global development goal set. The Asian country has made progress in tackling child labor, with the number of child workers falling from over 4 million in 2009. To 2.9 million. How to stop child labor? We can donate, provide free education for the children, spread awareness, and discourage people to employ children in homes, shops, etc. Conclusion The conclusion is children and men enjoy childhood and should be allowed to educate themselves at an early age. To reduce this type of child labor, the government has come up with a number of measures, including providing free education and taking strong measures against those who promote child labor. It is time to consider child labor to the history books and to allow all children to lose their rights. Child labor is a fact of life for children and it is an issue that affects all, all laws in many countries. Thank you.